Hi everybody, welcome to my van. Um, I've made a vlog video thus far about hashtag van life, um, but obviously I really never explained what I was doing here. Yeah, I have a vlog post. I know not a lot of people like to read, <laughs> so I don't necessarily expect anybody to have seen that a lot of the information I'm gonna cover is pretty similar to that but at the same time like I can tell you so much more in a video in five minutes than I can write in a blog post and so yeah without further ado let's just get started how did I get to the point where I was building this thing well I'm an idiot <laughs> so I thought I had signed a one-year lease with my apartment complex that I was in that's a normal thing, right? Signing a one-year lease. Um, so I unexpectedly, 10 months into my one-year one year lease, got an email saying, you have to sign a new lease and prices are going up 5% and, 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 and I was like, what are you talking about? This is pretty early. And so I went to my leasing office and they were like, no, you signed a 10 month contract. And I went, oh <laughs> so the fact that my rent was increasing was the first thing that made me think like okay well what am i doing here the second thing was that my student loans are coming due or at that time were coming due my master's university royally screwed up my student loans so i had like an extra year or so to be paying on them which i wasn't because i was in the process of furnishing an entire apartment from scratch on top of that i also had to buy my new car when I wasn't expecting to. I moved down to the Salt Lake area with a 97 Honda Accord with 385,000 miles on it. And I knew it was close to the end of its life, but I didn't realize that that thousand mile journey down here in two days was gonna be like the end. Because basically immediately when I got down here, it started having like serious issues. And so, I had to buy a car and therefore I have a car payment now. Those two things were unexpected when I was doing my budget way back before I even took this job. And so they resulted in me paying less of my student loans before my student loans came due than I had originally planned. So what that meant was that my student loan payment was gonna be very large due to the amount of student loans I have and it was going to be like the full enchilada because I didn't pay anything off already in advance um, which I had been planning to do. I had been watching van life videos for years and so it was an option in the back of my head and I was watching them obviously because I thought that they were interesting and I thought that it might be something that I would like to do. It was kind of on a list of like a someday kind of thing. I took about a week. I started crunching numbers not even with the van in mind. I, I was just like, okay, if I stay in this apartment and my student loans are estimated to be this amount of money because on top of that, my student loans were messed up into like multiple different due dates that somehow were not adding up and nobody figured out that they were multiple different due dates. So every time I called them asking, well, what will my loans be? It'd be like a different amount. And I'm like, what is it? How much do I have to pay every month? Turns out it's a sum of all of that. <laughs> which I was somewhat prepared for because the student calculator online put me in the like thousand dollar a month range. And so that's what I was using to budget with was a thousand dollars a month. My rent was like $1,200 a month. That's pretty typical in the area that I am because um, it's a big tech industry driving cost of rent up. And so that leads me pretty well to my next point where I got to my budget and I was very much underwater. I was gonna have to cut everything out of my life basically, which I'm not unwilling to do, but the problem is, is that I was gonna have to cut everything out of my life for 10 years. I was going to be able to make just the minimum payments, which meant that all of my debt was going to take the absolute longest to pay off that it could. So that meant eating beans and rice for the next 10 years no gym memberships for the next 10 years, no Hulu, no Netflix, no new clothes, no, hopefully no car wrecks or car maintenance or anything. Like anything like that would have just put me just 
immediately in a world of hurt. I could not afford anything, basically. I couldn't afford to breathe. <laughs> So at that point you're thinking, okay, $1,200 for an apartment, that's really expensive. I mean, I understand that it's like a silicone, silicone valley kind of thing, but like there's gotta be something cheaper. You could take roommates, like whatever. I started looking to move. I started looking for roommates. I even actually looked at what mortgages I could buy um, if my parents and I went half and half on a house, for example, because they need to buy a house for retirement. Um, and they weren't ready to buy a house in Utah because they're from Washington and that's a big move and they've never even been down here. So like understandably they said, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Um, but like that's the level of like option seeking I was at. Um, roommate situation in Utah, impossible because the majority of people are um, LDS and they want you to abide by LDS live-in rules which is not the end of the world i can like swallow my pride and not drink alcohol for however long i'm gonna live with these people but generally they were not willing to see me because i was not lds so um i would have lived by their rules that would have been okay i could do that but they didn't want to even take a chance because i wasn't and then on top of that the housing market is just so quick here everything i messaged that wasn't lds um, was already taken. I was able to see one apartment and it was kind of insane because it was in a brand new housing development. I watched these houses be built like four months ago and it was already disgusting because it was like a communal living situation where they had just people coming in and out constantly, almost like a hostel. Um, and that all areas were public areas, including like your room and your bathroom. And it was really disgusting and only a couple hundred dollars a month cheaper. So I ran those numbers for what that was going to be. And instead of me being underwater every month, I was going to be able to break even. And I wasn't willing to give up all of that and have this awful environment just to be breaking even and still being on beans and rice and still not being able to make ends meet. So at that point, I had that thought in my head, well, what about van life? I know I can't afford a home loan, but how much of an auto loan could I take out? So I did that. I went and looked at what vans were immediately available on Facebook Marketplace, on Craigslist, on the Samba, everything. And basically everything was in my price range in terms of an auto loan. It was between this Euro van that I'm in, spoiler alert, I got it, obviously, and a Ford more of like a camper style. I don't remember the name of it, sorry. And I went and saw both and I just clicked with the Euro van. I was like, I can do this. I hadn't made the decision to live in a van yet. I had run some numbers on like what van life might cost but I really hadn't made a decision and I literally never did make a decision until the day I actually bought this van because financing was a bitch. I hadn't even made the decision until after I had signed the papers and I was like, okay, well, I guess everything worked out and this is what I'm doing. Anyway, so I um, got this van because the gal who owned it had had it for about a year and the guy who had it before that was and I can't remember if he was mechanically inclined or if he was a mechanic, um, but she had it for a year. It sat in her garage for a year, so it was very sheltered. Um, and she was moving back to Georgia because she was done with her education here. And so she sold her van because she couldn't, she's a single person, she can't drive two vehicles and she wanted to keep her car, not the van. So I went and looked at it, took it for a test drive. She went and took it to a mechanic who did a little inspection on it. Not the full blown inspection that I think I would like or that people would recommend you to do, but it was an inspection. Yeah, so the first time I saw the van um, was like in her garage and we were looking at it and I just like, I can't explain it any other way than I just clicked with it. I saw everything in it and I was like, I can do this. The van itself was the reason why I thought I could do this because I obviously had seen a lot of conversions um, online and I was just thinking like, I don't have time for a full conversion. I can't go get some guy's, you know, um, plumbing van and rip it out and start from scratch because I have some woodworking experience, but the electrical, the plumbing, all that is just like far beyond me. I'd have to learn it from scratch. And at that point I had about a month until I had to move out. 
when I looked at the Eurovan, I realized like the majority of it's already done because the majority of it was still functional. It comes with a sink and plumbing. It comes with a refrigerator. It comes with the propane, all the lights and everything. The only thing that was really like left to do was woodworking. I had a month basically to rip out the rock and roll bed that was in here and install a bed that I wanted and then move out of my apartment, which seemed doable and was doable. I was down to the last day, but it was doable. So I ended up purchasing it. I got it quite a few thousand dollars underneath what she was asking for it because I could not finance this thing for the life of me. I ended up at a credit union. They were able to give me the um, book value of the van and then I took out a personal loan for the value above that because book values for RVs and campers and boats and all that kind of stuff apparently are just like not representative of asking prices. Uh, especially Eurovans because they have like somewhat of a collector status to them so their price is a lot higher than what their book value says that they are yeah that was the big struggle with financing the other big thing about the van is that it was already passed for smog emissions testing meaning that like I knew it didn't have anything wrong with it enough to keep it from passing emissions. That was another thing that was like a pro selling point for me and something that was really great because obviously as soon as I buy it, I have to go and register it in my name. And if I don't have the smog test in my hand, which I did because she had it, um, then I was gonna have to go get one. And if it failed, then before I even can start on the inside, I was gonna have to fix an engine. Um, and so that was a huge selling point for this specific van is because I already had a smog test in my hand. It was very recent and well, it has to be recent. They're only good for two years, but I knew that I would have no problem registering it. So like the first thing that I had to do once I bought the thing and got over the hurdle of buying it, registering it, I knew that I could do that and it was not gonna be any problems. And then I could just like get to work. So the other thing is that, yeah, I'm living in a van, like hashtag van life and everything, but I'm not traveling, I'm stationary. Um, a huge part of my decision making on this was whether or not I was going to be paying the same amount in, I, as I was in rent in one van loans into a place to put the van because um, RV parks um, and like KOAs and stuff are very expensive. They're like $300 a month or something. And so the amount I'm paying monthly on my van payment and however, wherever I'm parking it needs to be like less than however much I was paying for the apartment that I was in or even like a roommate situation with the apartment. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. I actually hopped on a site called Neighbor. They lease out storage spaces. So like if you have a cabinet in your garage or if you have a basement or a storage shed that you're not using, then you can lease it out and people can put their shit in it and um, you make money off of it and they have a cheap place to put their stuff. What they also do on that is RV storage. So people who have extra spaces in their driveways, like parking pads, just like random extra acreage, they put that on neighbor and people park their RVs on it and you know, Basically what I did was message the people who had RV spaces available that I would be willing to live in based on their photos and messaged them and asked them, hey, do you care if I live in it? Luckily, one guy came back off of that <laughs> and said, I don't care. I mean, I want to meet you, but yeah, I don't care. So I went and met him, looked at the spot. We talked about like electricity needs. We talked about water needs and um, it worked out really great. He's a really nice guy. Um, he's only charging me $65 a month to stay here, which obviously is like mind-blowing. So he owns the whole property. The place next door is a rental property. The tenants have the electricity that I'm hooked up to. So they're paying for my electricity right now. I have to coordinate with the tenants on um, how much electricity I need to pay every month. And side note, they haven't asked me to pay any electricity. I've talked to them, I've met them. They said that the electricity bills are so tiny because they're splitting it amongst themselves already inside the apartment that they don't even want me to pay electricity. It's like not even worth it for them. And then water, he um, said that he pays for the water. If it's from this spigot, I'm allowed to get however much water I want out of that. He's like, you can't possibly use very much water in that van. So like, just take the water out of it, no problem. And so I do, I have a flex hose in the back of the van and I can hook it up into um, his spigot, fill up the van water and 
I'm good to go. My water tank in the Eurovan is eight gallons and that lasts me about a week in the summer. And so it's just like a weekly chore that I do and it works out well. But yeah, moral of all of this story is that I'm stationary. I have my Honda that I originally bought because I had to replace my old Honda. Um, I have that and I commute with that. This van stays here 24 seven unless I'm taking trips or something, but I'm really enjoying my time here. Um, I know a lot of people were freaking out like, man, how are you not gonna go crazy in here? It's such a small space. And it just really doesn't feel like a small space, especially when you're sleeping. But your head is way back there and you have the whole van in front of you. And it's just, it's been really great. And one of the reasons that I know like that this is gonna work is because I just got back from a trip from Fiji where I was living in a hostel. And so like just to the absolute opposite of living in a van, you know, in the van I'm here, I'm by myself, it's a small space. All of it is mine. I can do whatever I want to it. And in the hostel, it's like a very large space with a lot of people in it and nothing is yours and you don't even like have really necessarily a place to put all of your stuff. And when I was in Fiji, I was actually thinking, I was like, man, how am I gonna adjust to being back in the van? I was dreading coming back to Utah because it's cold, like Fiji's 80 degrees, even in the middle of the night in the winter. But um, I was wondering like, oh man, how am I gonna adjust to being back in the van? But actually it all has been very seamless. It's just, um, it's home because I've made it and um, I've made it home and it made it all work for me. So that really was comforting. I can come back from like the polar opposite of this and still be happy. Van life thus far is going really well. I've been in it almost a half a year, I think. And um, I have no plans on leaving this until one, the van is paid off, which is gonna be a handful of years. And two, I'm done. Like I haven't finished my projects yet. So why would I, why would I get rid of this thing when it's a work in progress, you know? I'm enjoying the process of getting it and turning it into what I want. And so, um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep on keeping on and, and uh, see where the road takes me. If it takes me anywhere at all, this might be stationary for the next like five years, who knows? But um, I will at least take weekend trips and stuff. Catch up with me on my Instagram. I am most active on Instagram. I have a Facebook page and I have a blog that you guys can follow as well if you want. Um, but my Instagram is the most active place for you to find me. So um, link of all of that will be in the description box below. And yeah, I hope you guys all have a great day and that this was helpful for you all because I know this can be a little confusing to some people. Anyways, I'm rambling. I will get off of here and um, talk to you all as all later. Bye.